We're now in a new section of the Catechism. We're now on G, the Gospel response. So now we're looking at how should we respond to the Gospel. So question 29, how should we respond to the good news of Jesus? Repent and believe. So let's look at that. Mark 1, 15. Let's turn there. So what two commands does Jesus give when he announces his kingdom? Repent and believe. Repent and believe. Okay, so we've got a, we've got a diagram here um, of a non-Christian on the left and Jesus on the right. And which direction is a non-Christian faced in? Away from Jesus and towards what? Sin, Sin right? And then repenting means turning around 180 degrees and facing Jesus, right? And so the repenting is turning away from sin. And then the faith is like turning to Jesus, trusting Jesus to save him. And those two things, repentance and faith, when those two things happen together, what do we call that? Conversion. So that's what is conversion. Um, I know in, you know in popular usage, when people say someone's converted, they just mean, oh, they become a Christian. But technically, and when we're talking about systematic theology, we'd, we would say conversion is when you repent and believe. Um, so we turn from our sin and we turn towards Jesus, trusting in him. And trust is the same thing as believe. Because in the Bible, you've got this Greek word, pistuo, which is the verb for believe, and it's also the verb for trust. They, they just have one Greek word that's used for trust and belief, whereas we have two English words, which makes it seem a bit more complicated. Um, so um, we've also got a picture of a coin here. Do you see the picture of the coin? Um, repentance and faith are like two sides to a coin, right? And this coin is called conversion. And you need to have both sides to this coin. You need to have faith and you need to have repentance to have truly converted. Um, anyone got any questions about this? Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I think I've asked someone this before. Like, what, what do you think comes first? Faith or repentance? Or repentance or faith? Is there, is there an order? Or does it come out? So your question is, what comes first? Faith or repentance? Yeah. Is there an order? I'm drawing a blank in my brain right now, but when we do part two of the catechism, we look at the order of salvation. And so if we don't answer your question then, oh, Mark's going to answer it. No, no, I'm not going to necessarily answer I'm just saying, could, could there be something in the fact that Jesus says, repent and believe? Could there be something in that he doesn't say believe and repent, he says repent and believe? What? Is that a bit of a stretch? What does it mean about I don't know. Let's wait till we get to the second part of Catechism where we do the order of salvation and then that, that might come up. Uh, what I would say is when we talk about the order of things happening, there's a logical order to how some things happen when you get saved. But it's sometimes hard to tell what the temporal order is. When I say temporal, I mean time. So for example, when we come onto the second part of the Catechism, we see that God changes your heart before you believe in him, okay? Logically, that has to happen, as we, we see when we study it. You have to have God change your heart so that then you're like, I believe in you. Uh, but, but what is the temporal, how, how much time is there between God changing your heart and believing? Is it a nanosecond? Is it a millisecond? Is it five seconds? Is it, you know, what, what is it? I don't know, but there is definitely a logical order. But can you always distinguish in someone's life, ah, that was it, they just got their heart changed. Oh, that's it, they just believed. Oh, they've just repented. Like, can we tell those things? It's, it's hard to tell. Um, but, there is, but there is a logical order to it, and we'll come on to that in part two. Um, what I would want to say in this catechism question is that um, the repenting and believing is something that we should do every day, so it's not just like, oh, I repented years ago, but it's like, no, we should keep repenting every day. Now, um, 
I don't think this is, it's mentioned in the teacher's guide that we should repent every day, but I know before I've taken Christians through this, they've said that someone taught them before that you only repent once. Um, and that's definitely not true. And, uh, and uh, the, one of the ways we know that's not true is if we look at Revelation. Um, so please turn to Revelation 3. Now, <laughs> Uh, it's in one of the letters to the churches. I know I did the same thing last week, didn't I? Um, it's like, where is this? Um, but there's only a few letters, so we get there in the end. Okay, um, Revelation 2. Revelation 2.5. Uh, which church is this written to? Who's got a paper Bible? Ephesus, see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, verse 5 consider how far you have fallen repent and do the things you did at first if you do not repent I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place so who's he talking to? Christians and what does he tell them to do? repent okay I could show you other examples um, interestingly as well it's to one of these churches where he says I stand at the door and knock uh, he's not actually talking to non-Christians he's talking to Christians um, he's talking to the church so um, the Bible does t teach us to, to, that we should be repenting all the time whenever we're sinning, not just when we, um, when we convert. But the big thing I'm trying to get across in this illustration with the coin is that you want to repent and believe if you're a genuine convert. Two sides of the same coin. Don't try and pit one against the other and say, well, this person believes, but they haven't repented yet. Um, some people have done that before and there was a big controversy about it. It was called Lordship Salvation and there was a big bust up about it a few years ago um, where some people were saying, you can believe in Jesus but not have him as your Lord yet. And other people were saying, no, you can't not have him as your Lord and believe. And, and what, what I'm saying is you've got, you got to be repenting and believing at the same, at the same time. So we've got some application questions here. First one is, have you repented and believed? So there we're looking for, have you actually done this? So a lot of us have had experiences where you're, you've got someone who's been coming to church for, for weeks and you've been discipling them and you're like, I don't know if this person's a Christian yet. Like they come to all our things and all that, but are they really a believer? It can be helpful to ask them, have you repented and believed? As they go through it and, and they think, you know what? I don't think I've, I've actually converted yet. You know, or they might say, yes, I have. Um, now, you've got to be careful because some of us know the story of Billy Graham's. Uh, uh, was it, was it, wasn't there a, a girl who dumped him because she said he wasn't spiritual enough? Yeah, I think, I think there might, there's a story about that. But, you know, these legends form, who knows if it's true or not. But no, Billy Graham's wife, right? Um, she couldn't pinpoint a time when she turned to Christ. And for a lot of people who've grown up in a Christian family, a lot of people can't pinpoint the moment that they trusted in Jesus. They just know they do trust in Jesus. Um, so I remember one of my children one day who was saying they didn't want to follow Jesus. One night they're reading their Bible and they got all excited and they said, I want to follow Jesus now, you know. And we're all excited. We're in the bedroom with them, just so happy in that. And then one of their siblings goes, well, I believed that for days and days and days. <laughs> you know? And I think they was a little bit disappointed because they never had this kind of conversion experience. And they're like, why are you getting so excited about them? Like, I've always thought this. Um, so it, for some people, it's hard to know, when did I actually repent and believe? So you don't necessarily want to be like, what, you can't remember a day you repented and believed? You're not a Christian. We don't, we don't want to be like that. You know, um, but, but, but they, you can ask someone, well, go to the next question. Do you do this regularly? Do you repent and believe regularly? Are you regularly turning from your sin? And are you regularly trusting Jesus for your salvation and trusting him for all the things that he promises? So, for example, there's many sins in our life that are linked to us not believing Jesus. Okay, so for example, if, if we have a lot of control issues where we want to control everything, that could be linked to not trusting that Jesus is in control and that he will take care of us. If, if we find that 
we get very anxious and we respond sinfully to stressful situations. Uh, that could be linked to the fact that we're not trusting that Jesus has said, you're worth more than many sparrows. Um, so, so we want to ask ourselves, are we regularly trusting in Jesus? And then the third question, how would someone act if they only did one side of the coin? Yeah, so how would someone act if they only repented but didn't believe? Or how would someone act if they believed but didn't repent? Now, here's the thing, right? There's always some smart aleck, right, who goes, that's not possible. We're not looking for that response. Like, I know what you mean when you say it's not possible, but we're actually looking for you to tease it out and say, what would it look like if someone believed in Jesus but didn't actually turn from their sin? If they were trusting Jesus to save them, but they never turned from sin? Or what would it look like if someone turned from their sin, but they weren't really trusting Jesus to save them? So just try and tease that out and be prepared for someone to say, it's not possible, can't be done. And just say, I know what you're saying, but let's just tease it out and see what it would look like. So any questions on that question? How should we respond to the good news of Jesus? It seems like a simple question, right? And yet, I, like, I remember a friend of mine once, a Christian friend saying, oh, the gospel seems so complicated. You know, how do you explain the gospel to someone? You know, and it's like, well, it's very easy to explain what well, the gospel is the good news of what Jesus has done, right? And the response to that is repent and believe. So that's proper simple, yeah? That's three words, repent and believe. So it is an important question. Um, okay, so if you can turn to the person next to you and go through those three application uh, questions, please. And then just pray together. <clears throat>